Um, and this book called Eat Right for Your Type. I'm not sure if you all have heard of that, but let's see. Let me share that with you first. This is an outstanding book. So I got it probably about 15 years or so ago. And it's called Eat Right for Your Type by Peter Dadamo. He and his dad actually, um, his dad started the research on this. And what it talks about um, are the four different blood types that are out there. And what is good for our, each of those blood types on an individualized basis. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I learned some time ago. And now that I'm refreshing my memory, some things that I'm going to start doing again. And one of the things it talks about in here is, it says, Today, as we look back on this remarkable evolutionary revolution, it is clear that our ancestors had unique biological blueprints that complemented their environments. It is this lesson we bring with us into our current understanding of blood types, for the genetic characteristics of our ancestors live in our blood today. So we're going to talk a little bit about what each of the blood types um, ancestry chain, um, I guess you could say their line where they originated from. So blood type O, which is what I am, the oldest and most basic blood type, the survivor at the top of the food chain with a strong and ornery immune system willing to and capable of destroying anyone, friend or foe. Now, I found that to be kind of interesting. It does talk about how blood type O's are, that the people who are blood type O's can have beef on a routine basis and digest it okay, whereas some of the other blood types cannot digest beef well. And so I had actually cut back on beef quite a bit, but I try now to at least incorporate that into my diet twice a week. And that could be a burger, it could be um, steak, anything beef, as long as it's not salty. So one of the things I eliminated some time ago is cooking with salt. So, um, and so as long as I can do that without the salt, then it, you know, I feel like, and the vegetable is healthy too. So what I try to do is combine a beef and a vegetable or any meat that I do, I try to combine, combine that with the vegetable, whether it's a salad or greens. I do a lot of greens. I do a lot of string beans. I prepare them fresh. I do a lot of carrots um, and sugar snap peas. I don't do spinach as much as I used to only because I recently found out, well, recently discovered how um, spinach has uric acid, as does cabbage, as does Brussels sprouts and broccoli. So I don't do those vegetables maybe once a month or something like that. So I think I share with you all in one of the videos that I've done before that I used to put spinach in just about everything. And I believe that I had an overabundance of uric acid because of that. So I remember um, sharing with you all that my mom told us when we were kids, anything in moderation. When you go to the extreme, that they might start causing problems for you. And the spinach did start causing some problems for me. So I, um, I thought I was having arth arthritic issues and come to find out they were gout issues. So I've cut back on that as long as I don't have an overabundance of any of those things, any like potatoes, any of those um, earthy root vegetables as well. Some of them you can still do. I have to kind of go, maybe I'll make that a separate video and go into more detail about that. But like white potatoes I can't do, but sweet potatoes I can do. Um, and so just to try to keep that uric acid down, there are certain things I won't do. So now getting back to the blood types and um, what's recommended. So for blood type A, the first immigrants forced by the necessity of migration to adapt to, adapt to a more ag agrarian diet and lifestyle with a more cooperative personality to get along in crowded communities. And then type B, the assimilator adapting to new climates and the mingling of populations representing nature's quest for a more balanced force 
between the tensions of the mind and the demands of the immune system. Type AB says the delicate offspring of a rare merger between the tolerant type A and the formerly barbaric but more balanced type B. And it says our ancestors left each of us a special legacy imprinted in our blood types. This legacy exists permanently in the nucleus of each cell. It is here that the anthropology and science of our blood meet. So that's, I think, one of the most important things to try to remember um, as you think about why certain foods do certain things to certain people and may not do certain things in other people. So I'm going to skip a few pages and get over here to share a little bit more detail about the blood type O food plan because we're talking about my journey right now, but I wanted to share a little bit about what differences there are out there. So as I mentioned before, blood type O is considered the hunter. And that's because our ancestors hunted their food and anything that could be hunted and captured, they prepared and they ate. So we're the meat eaters. We're, we have hearty digestive tracts. We have an overactive immune system. We're intolerant to dietary and environmental adaptations. We respond best to stress when intense, with physical intense activity. Um, requires an efficient metabolism to stay lean and energetic. And I can't say my, my metabolism is very efficient right now. What I'm trying to find out is how I can naturally build my metabolism system back up so that and I don't want to do it using any supplements or anything like that. I don't want to get to a point where I'm causing more harm to my body. So I'm trying to do things slowly. As I learn different things, I want to implement those things. So type O, again, for meal planning, there's a, a plan in here for how we should plan our meals. Um, the groups of food is d divided into three different categories. So there's the highly beneficial food category, there's the neutral category, and then there's the food category called avoid. So of course, I stay away from those that say avoid. I've been somewhat dipping and dabbing still in that category that's for neutral. What I'm trying to do, and I don't know if I want to permanently eliminate the neutral group, but for a while, I want to stay away from those that's even in the neutral group, which is why I say I'm going to be very limited because I want to stay in the category called highly beneficial. The highly beneficial is a food that acts like a medicine. It's a natural, it's a food, but it's a natural way for us to get what's necessary in our bodies. So that's why they say it acts like a medicine. Neutral is a food that acts like a food. So it, it doesn't really... I mean, you know, food, all foods are supposed to have its benefits in the body, but there's no special benefit. It, it gives you nutrients, yes, but it's nothing that's like a medicine, you know, like certain medicines would do. So that is some foods I might, you know, eventually add back in that's in the neutral category. But the avoid list is a food, the avoids food category is a food that acts like a poison. So those are foods that cause harm for our bodies and especially under the blood category. Like it's going to mention certain foods that might be better for type A, blood type A, but are not good for blood type O. So it could be hazardous to blood type O's body, whereas it's not hazardous for blood type A. So if I happen to mention something that I'm going to not do, doesn't mean that you shouldn't do if you're different than a blood type O start here it breaks it down not only by your blood type but by your ancestry so if your ancestry is African you might be able to have a certain portion that's different from Asian or different from Caucasian so I'm going to list I'm going to mention all of that for seafood African Americans can have four to six ounces one to four times per week Whereas Caucasians can have four to six ounces, three to five times a week, and Asians can have it four to six times a week. So Asians' ancestor, ancestry 
um, from what I read, are more um, adaptable to hunting fish, hunting seafood, not just fish, but seafood. And they're more, um, their, their line, I guess you can say their ancestry line is more capable of digesting and getting more out of that um, food than the African Americans. Foods that encourage weight gain. So meats and poultry are supposed to be really good as long as you eat them with the vegetable. We should not be eating meat with any wheat gluten, any corn, any kidney beans, navy beans, lentils, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, or mustard greens. Now who knew? I never would have thought that. I love just about all these vegetables. I didn't eat a lot of navy beans. I ate corn all the time coming up. I never thought that that would have been an issue. But that encourages weight gain in type O's. The foods that encourage weight loss, you can have with meat and it does okay with your body. And those foods are kelp, well, seafood, of course, you wouldn't do with the meat, but you can do that individualized. It says here, iodized salt. I don't do salt, though, because it can raise my blood pressure, which is a hereditary thing for me. Um, I think that once I lose weight and get to a new healthier me, that it won't be as much of an issue, but I'm still not going to add that salt back into my diet like that. Um, liver, I used to eat a lot of liver. Um, and I still could eat liver. I just don't prepare it as much as I used to, but I never knew that it was that good for my body. I know it contained the B vitamins. I just never knew it was something that encouraged weight loss. So that was a good thing. Here they talk about the red meat because it aids it efficiently in metabolizing or in helping your body to metabolize. Kale, spinach, and broccoli. Those also aid efficient me metabolism. So broccoli, I have to stay somewhat clear of. Spinach, for a time being, I'm going to stay somewhat clear of. But kale is awesome. Kale and collards, both are awesome. So for the other uh, meats that are helpful to us, to type O's, lean red meat. So for women... The recommendation is two to five ounces, five to seven times per week for African Americans on a weekly basis. So that's why I sort of set my limit at two times a week. Um, even though it says five to seven times, I'm going to start with two times and see how that goes and maybe increase it to um, up to five times maybe per week. And that can include breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So for breakfast there, um, I haven't been doing meats much at all. But I think I'm going to actually start adding meat back in at least twice a week. And then I'll determine whether I will add it in more, whether it be for lunch or dinner. And like I said, for dinner, I, I was already doing it at least twice a week because I would have a burger at least once a week. And I would have... Um, Either beef, um, oh my goodness, lean beef, cuts of beef, not necessarily steak. I like steak. I like beef ribs, but um, beef roast, just slices of beef roast. Um, I love that too. So for now, twice a week, whether it be breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and then see how that helps my body. And then I may add in more times per week. So for poultry, it also says that women can consume two to five ounces of poultry for African Americans once or twice a week. So for now, I'm going to do poultry once a week, and that can be turkey, chicken. Um, there's another. I don't do duck as often, but if I were to do duck, I probably would not do any chicken or turkey um, through that week. The good thing is, well, from what I understand, turkey and chicken are both somewhat on the leaner side already. Um, so you can eat eat that and it won't cause much fat, but it, you have to have it in proper combination. So you should have it with a green vegetable. 
Some people still want to have it with the carbohydrate. I am trying to stay away from carbohydrates for a while, and that's going to be the bread, um, the potatoes, the rice. If I do potatoes, it's going to be sweet potato. I'm going to eliminate rice. Well, I shouldn't say eliminate. Every now and then I'll get a salad from Chipotle and I'll put a half of spoon of um, the brown rice in there and I will consume that. I'm not going to say I'm going to eliminate that altogether. And then the other highly beneficial meats, in addition to the beef, where they say ground beef and the beef, the buffalo, the, the beef heart, lamb, which I love. I eat lamb at least once a week liver, veal, mutton, and venison. All of those are highly beneficial for blood type O's to consume. What's neutral is the chicken, the Cornish hens, the duck, the partridge, the pheasant, the rabbit, the turkey, and the quail. Well, you know, I always thought the turkey was in the highly beneficial category, so I'm glad I see that. Um, and then that to avoid, I avoid pork anyway, only because of the sodium content, but the bacon, the goose, the ham, and the pork. All right. And then under seafood, the highly, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'll at least get through the meats and the vegetables really quickly. The highly beneficial seafood is bluefish, cod, hack, halibut, herring, mackerel, pike some of these i've never even heard of rainbow trout red snapper salmon i love salmon i do salmon at least once a week sardines which i'm kind of surprised about because that has a high sodium content s-h-a-d shad and then the snapper sole striped bass i've heard of that one before i just don't think i've ever eaten it sturgeon swordfish tilefish white perch, white fish, yellow perch, and yellow tail. Those are all highly beneficial seafood. Neutral, just about everything else that's not listed up there under highly beneficial is under neutral. So that includes the tuna, the carp, it's a whole list of stuff. So I'm just kind of skipping through the crab, the crayfish, the flounder. Now I like flounder and that's under that. The frog is under neutral, grouper, haddock, lobster, mahi-mahi, monkfish, mussels, ocean perch, oysters, pickerel, the porgy, <laughs> the sailfish, the scallops. Oh my goodness, the scallops under neutral. I would have thought that would have been under highly beneficial. The shrimp. I love shrimp. Squid. Calamari is one of my favorites. Y'all, I don't know if I'm going to be able to give up some of these neutrals. I can't do that. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe for a couple of weeks and see how it goes. And the ones that it tells us to avoid, oh my goodness, catfish is on this list. And I love catfish. Ah, the barracuda, caviar, conch, herring, with a pickled herring, the smoked salmon, which is the lox, and the octopus. That's going to be quite interesting. I, I think I can give up everything there except catfish. I'm going to go without it for a while and I'll see how I, how I do. And if I have to give it up permanently, I'll give it up permanently. But catfish is definitely one of my favorites. So now I'm finally to the vegetables. Raw vegetables are the best for our the blood type O's. We can consume cooked or steam. They're just not as beneficial as the raw. So... The raw vegetables, it says all ancestral types for blood type O's can have three to five servings per day. Not per week, per day, three to five servings. So that's why I usually have a nice size salad either for lunch or dinner at least four times a week, at least. And then cooked if I prepare a, a, a hot vegetable, it's usually greens, which I'll only do maybe every other week. Um, I can prepare a pot full of those. I like to um, grill my sugar snap peas and my carrots. So I will buy big bags of those and I'll put that on my grill. I have a countertop grill and I'll just grill them. 
and I eat off of those for a few days. After the first day, I may put a bowl full in the freezer or two bowlfuls in the freezer so I can eat off of them, um, you know, a couple times through the week. And so always know that a tremendous amount of vegetables should be eaten by blood type O's. That's the and actually I think that's across the board all blood types they're going to recommend you eat a lot of a lot of vegetables, but the green leafy vegetables are rich in vitamin K, so collard greens, romaine lettuce, broccoli and spinach and, and um kale uh, are very good for typos and the vitamin K has a purpose and that's to help your blood to clot, so typos um, we lack clotting factors and I don't know if it's just blood type O's they may talk about that a little bit more with the blood type A, B and AB also but your blood should be able to clot and if it doesn't then there's a deficiency and if you have that deficiency the green leafy vegetables are the best vegetables to eat for that so they talk about most of the vegetables being highly beneficial or neutral. The ones I have to avoid, the first one I see on the list is avocado. Avocado, cabbage, any form of cabbage, red cabbage, white cabbage, and then the cauliflower, any form of corn, whether it's white or yellow, eggplant, mushroom. I knew it was something about mushroom. I used to force myself to eat mushroom in Chinese food. Um, but I've stopped forcing myself to eat it and I know mushroom is now that I read this mushroom is not of any benefit to blood typos none whatsoever now I love greens collard kale I will eat those mustard greens is not uh, a greens that I should be eating being an african-american blood type O olives I have to avoid any whether it's Greek Spanish black olives any of those white and red potatoes I have to avoid alfalfa sprouts and brussels sprouts and i figured that too because i never was a, a fan of sprouts when i tasted it it didn't seem to do much for me so i've been leaving those alone so i'm going to stop there for now and i'll go through a little bit more of this the next um video that i do so until then please let me know if you have any comments that you can help me with is let me know what you think about what I've shared with you about Peter Dodamo's book, Eat Right for Your Type, and if it's anything that you may have experienced, um, that, you know, some of the things that I've shared in here about what's helpful for blood type O's and what's not helpful for blood type O's. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. If you liked any of the information that I provided, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our ch sister um, cousin's channel, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.